Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and I'd like to talk to everyone today about hydroxychloroquine. There have been two recent items that have brought hydroxychloroquine back into the spotlight. The first is a group of physicians called America's Frontline Doctors that have been on the news quite a bit lately, and they've been claiming that some of the studies that have been done on hydroxychloroquine have been based on fake science. I just wanna say that, first of all, that was very concerning for me to hear because a lot of the medical data that we have is the foundation of our profession. And I wanna say that we have a lot of good data about hydroxychloroquine, and I'd like to go through those studies with you guys. The other thing that brought hydroxychloroquine back into the spotlight was the Henry Ford Hospital Study that was published on July 2nd. It was published in the International Journal of Infectious Diseases, which is not a very well-known uh, journal, which should raise concerns, first of all. And it was a retrospective analysis, which isn't a great study. It's not a double-blind placebo-controlled trial. It was something where they just looked back on data. They did study 2,541 patients and they looked at patients that received hydroxychloroquine. They found that mortality in the group that had hydroxychloroquine was 13% versus 26% for patients that did not receive hydroxychloroquine. And that sounds great. And the headline stated that hydroxychloroquine reduced mortality. However, when you looked more at the data, you realize that 79% of the patients received steroids that were in the hydroxychloroquine group, and only 36% of patients in, this, in the standard of care group received steroids. Now we know that dexamethasone, which is a steroid, reduces mortality. So the fact that the hydroxychloroquine group received steroids makes me think that this study was not well done. So based on the Henry Ford study and the America's Frontline Doctors, hydroxychloroquine was brought back into light about possibly being used as a treatment for COVID-19. Let's stop and first, I wanna talk about the difference between inpatient and outpatient studies. Inpatient studies are patients that are hospitalized. Outpatient studies focus on patients that are not in the hospital and that have not needed to be hospitalized for COVID-19. The data is clear about using hydroxychloroquine for patients that are in the hospital. And there was a recent New England Journal of Medicine study that was published on July 23rd that pretty much put the nail in the coffin for hydroxychloroquine use in the hospital. This study was a randomized open label, so it was not blinded without a placebo, but they studied 600 hospitalized patients and they gave hydroxychloroquine twice a day for seven days versus standard of care. And they found no clinical benefit benefit in patients that received hydroxychloroquine. Another New England Journal of Medicine study was published in May 2020. This was an observational study. It was not randomized. They studied 1,300 patients and they were given hydroxychloroquine for five days. The primary endpoint was intubation or death and they found that the risk was not higher or lower for intubation or death among patients that received hydroxychloroquine. However, there was some selection bias in this study and they commented on that. The patients that received hydroxychloroquine tended to be sicker and they used an analysis to remove that bias as best they could. Let's move on to the recovery trial. In this study, over 11,000 patients from over 175 hospitals in the United Kingdom have been studied. The primary endpoint was mortality. And patients that were on hydroxychloroquine were less likely to be discharged from the hospital alive within 28 days. And those that were not on invasive mechanical ventilation at baseline were more likely to go on to get invasive mechanical ventilation or to death when they were placed on hydroxychloroquine. There was just a 3% difference between both of these groups, the ones that used hydroxychloroquine and the ones that didn't, but it was statistically significant. So at the end of the day, the data is clear on hydroxychloroquine use for hospitalized patients. The answer is no, that's not a good use of hydroxychloroquine. But what about prophylactic use of hydroxychloroquine, giving hydroxychloroquine to patients that do not have COVID-19 symptoms? Well, there are two types of prophylactic studies that are currently being done. One is pre-exposure and one is post-exposure prophylaxis. 
We do have some good data on post-exposure prophylaxis. And this study is from the New England Journal of Medicine. They gave hydroxychloroquine to people within four days of a moderate or high risk exposure. A moderate exposure was when a person with known COVID-19 was, was with a medical provider who was wearing a mask but not a face shield. And a high risk exposure was when a medical provider was with a COVID-19 positive patient and neither was wearing a mask. This was a double blind placebo controlled study, which is the gold standard. They studied 821 patients and they found that when hydroxychloroquine was given to patients after moderate or high risk exposure, it did not work. There was no difference. 12% of patients that received hydroxychloroquine went on to develop COVID-19 versus 14% of patients that simply received placebo. This difference was not statistically significant. However, I do want to point out that even with moderate to high risk exposures, only 12 to 14% of these medical care providers went on to develop COVID-19. I think that's really reassuring. Next, let's move on to pre-exposure prophylaxis. So this is giving hydroxychloroquine to people before they ever have been exposed or develop COVID-19. I think this is an exciting area that deserves more research. There are lots of studies currently underway for pre-exposure prophylaxis. The University of Oxford is hoping to recruit 40,000 people in a double-blind placebo-controlled studies using 200 milligrams daily and healthcare providers. There's also a study in Lafayette, Louisiana, that they're hoping to recruit 1,700 healthcare providers and give hydroxychloroquine to medical care providers twice a week. And lastly, there's also a study in New Mexico, although the data won't be available for about five more years. I think this shows that there's a lot of excitement regarding pre-exposure prophylaxis with hydroxychloroquine. We do not have good results with using hydroxychloroquine in patients in the hospital or after they've been exposed to COVID-19. Thanks again for joining me.